In the previous example of mediation, the results suggested that there was an indirect effect, but they also suggested that there was no direct effect between self-oriented perfectionism and positive affect. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of partial mediation, which implies that the indirect effect is statistically significant and the direct effect is statistically significant. Now I'm going to go through this relatively quickly because I'm going to assume that you've already looked at the previous example as well as the video that discusses concepts and terms associated with a mediation analysis. So first I'll introduce the variables. Social perfectionism is the independent variable and that's a bad thing. That's the perfectionism that you perceive to be imposed by others onto you. Then we have the dependent variable which in this case is negative affect. So that's feeling unhappy and unoptimistic about the future. And then we have the mediator, which is flourishing. So the first step is to estimate the total effect between the independent variable and the dependent variable. And that's easily done through the regression utility. So we have social perfectionism as the independent variable and negative affect as the dependent variable. Is there any effect to mediate to begin with? And the answer should be yes. Otherwise, it's pointless to do the mediation analysis. So here we got the unstandardized beta weight of 0 0.390 and a standardized beta weight of 0 0.430, and it's statistically significant. So higher scores on social perfectionism are associated with higher levels of negative affect. So it's a bad thing. So that's the total effect. That's the starting point. The next step is to estimate the effect between the independent variable and the mediator. So that is socially oriented perfectionism and flourishing. That's the coefficient labeled A. That can be done easily with a regression. Analyze regression linear. And socially oriented perfectionism stays in the independent box. And we have flourish in the dependent box. And click OK. Scroll right to the bottom. Here's that unstandardized beta weight, negative 0.299. I'm going to put that here, negative 0.299 with a standard error of 0 0.062, 0 0.062. The next step is to conduct a multiple regression with the independent variable and the mediator predicting the dependent variable negative affect. That can be done easily. Analyze regression linear. Take that out of the dependent box and put it in the independent box and put negative affect in the dependent variable box. Click OK. Here are the two unstandardized beta weights and unstandardized standard errors I need. I note that both of them are statistically significant. And I'll also note that socially oriented perfectionism has a standardized beta weight of 0.375 and it's statistically significant, which implies that there's a direct effect that is statistically significant here. So let me input the unstandardized value, 0.34, and a standard error of 0 0.042. And here we've got negative 0.167 with a standard error of 0 0.033. And all these terms are statistically significant. Now I note that the method I demonstrate here is on the basis of the unstandardized beta weights. Technically, you need to conduct the Sobel test, which I'm going to do in a minute, with the unstandardized beta weights and the unstandardized standard errors. And you can infer those results to the standardized beta weights as well. So if in a report you wanted to report all the standardized beta weights, or report both of them, the unstandardized and standardized, you can do that and interpret the statistical significance on the basis of the unstandardized analyses. So going back to the direct effect, there is a statistically significant direct effect going from socially oriented perfectionism and negative affect that is independent, that is independent of any indirect effect going through flourishing. So it seems like socially oriented perfectionism is an especially bad thing because it has a direct route to negative affect independently of any sense of accomplishing things and progressing. So this seems like an especially pernicious sort of perfectionism. And just for comparison, the total effect started off with a standardized coefficient of 0.430, socially oriented perfectionism and negative affect, 
and now it's 0.375. So it has reduced from 0 0.430 down to 0.375, and we'll be able to make a determination about whether that drop from the total effect to the direct effect is statistically significant on the basis of estimating the statistical significance associated with the indirect effect. As noted, the indirect effect is the multiplication of the A coefficient and the B coefficient. And that point estimate obtained from multiplying the A coefficient and the B coefficient can be tested for statistical significance with that syntax file I reference in the chapter. So there's a link in the textbook that allows you to get this syntax. And as mentioned in the previous video, you need to run this to put it into SPSS's memory if you haven't already. So click all. And then I need to create a data file that has the variables named in accordance with what the syntax is expecting it to be called. And again, that's from the previous video. We need the dependent variable, the independent variable, and the mediator. So let's put those in. So the dependent variable, copy, paste. I'm going to have to rename these as I did in the previous video. Independent variable, socially oriented perfectionism. Put that in there. Now I need the mediator. Flourish. Copy. And you'll recall from the previous video, I needed to rename these variables to y var, x var, and m var. Once you have the data file set up, you should probably save it, but I'm not going to bother. You need to open up a new syntax file. Assuming you've already run this syntax file to put it into SPSS's memory, and then open up a new syntax file and place this command into it. This is from the Preacher and Hayes paper. I'll try to put this line of syntax somewhere in the textbook or in the bottom of the video. Click paste, or you can write it out. It's not very complicated. It says Sobel y equals y var x equals x var, m equals m var, and bootstrapping, I'm going to put it to 2,000 replications. No one would ever complain about 2,000. It should be plenty. And then click Run. And you can see SPSS is running it. It's going to take a while because it's doing all the iterations. And it's completed. And we can just go straight down to the Sobel test, which has estimated an indirect effect. This is the point estimate of 0.050. It's positive because the coefficients were both negative, and when you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive. So the point estimate indirect effect is equal to 0 0.050. So if I wanted to put that here, I could equals 0 0.050. That's the indirect effect. And it is statistically significant with a z value of 3.44 and p equal 0 0.0006. So p less than 0 0.001. And here are the confidence intervals, 95%, associated with the point estimate. Now this is based on the Sobel test, which assumes a certain level of normality. The more robust bootstrapping result is consistent with the Sobel test. Here's the point estimate, 0 0.050. And the 95% confidence intervals do not intersect with 0. Instead, it goes as low as 0 0.02 and as high as 0 0.08. And because these two values are positive and the point estimate is positive, then we imply that it's a statistically significant indirect effect. If this point estimate were negative, then these two confidence intervals would have to be negative in order to declare the point estimate as statistically significant. In this case, it's positive, and they're both positive. Therefore, I declare a statistically significant effect. So in summary, there is an indirect effect of socially oriented perfectionism onto negative affect, and it's equal to 0 0.050, and it's statistically significant. It runs through flourishing. But there is also a statistically significant direct effect leading from socially oriented perfectionism to negative affect. And because this direct effect is statistically significant, and the indirect effect is statistically significant, I would conclude that this is a case of partial mediation, which is in contrast to the previous example, which was consistent with full mediation.